Welcome back to Discrete Structures, I'm Mirkov, and if you're anything like me, that last lecture was pretty boring. I'm sure you're saying to yourself, wow, I really wish Discrete Structures had more pictures. Well, you're in luck today, because we're going to be talking about graphs. Let me start with a little story. Once upon a time, there was a place called Konigsberg. Some fellow was wondering whether or not he could walk across every bridge in the city without crossing the same bridge twice. There are seven bridges in Konigsberg, connecting the different islands in the mainland. This is notable because, instead of talking about things, we're really talking about the connections between things. So let's get started. We're going to use graphs to solve this problem. Here you can see the city of Konigsberg with four dots representing the different areas of land. We can represent these areas as dots because we don't care about how you're walking around within the island, just how you're leaving it over the bridge. These dots we'll call vertices or nodes, and the bridges we will call edges or arcs. I'm just kidding, we're not going to call them arcs, we're going to call them edges. So you can see we can represent this picture on the left more concisely as this picture on the right, just dots and lines connecting them. These lines, it doesn't matter what shape they are, how curved they are, how long they are, it only matters where they start and where they end. In fact, if we wanted to, we could rotate this image or flip it horizontally, and it would still represent the same graph for our purposes. So, can we do what we were just talking about, crossing each of the bridges? Nope. Take a moment and try it for yourself, because it's kind of fun. Okay, so let's get started talking about graphs. Let's first talk about the complete graphs, or clicks. Here we can see a diagram of the first 12 clicks. These clicks are called K1, K2, and so forth to Kn. A click is nothing more than a collection of n vertices, with edges between every pair. Next to the name of each of these clicks, you'll see the number of edges. Note, it doesn't matter that these edges are crossing each other, because it only matters where they start and end. Other special graphs include cycles. Cn is a cycle on n vertices. A star has n vertices, where one of those vertices is in the center, and each of the remaining ones is connected to nothing except for that center node. The center node acts sort of like a hub. Which brings us to wheels. Wheels are like stars mixed with cycles. Fancy! But what fun is it if we only have regular graphs? Let's talk about other types, such as a bipartite graph. A bipartite graph is any graph where you have vertices in two categories, where no vertices in the first category are connected, and no vertices in the second category are connected. Here we can see none of the light blue ones are connected to each other, and none of the yellow ones are connected to each other directly either. There might be situations where we want to represent a connection between two nodes more than once. In this case, we'll use a multigraph. In a multigraph, two nodes can have more than one edge between them. If we want to get even crazier, we can try a pseudograph. In pseudographs, we have the properties of a multigraph, but every node is also allowed to have an edge connected to itself, such as this loop here at the top of this diagram. In general, when we talk about graphs, we're not going to be allowing self-loops, and we're not going to allow repeated edges. So if we can put nodes on the page anywhere we want, and draw edges as crazy as we want, how do we determine that they're the same? To prove that two graphs are isomorphic, we would like to create a labeling on the graphs so that when we match up the nodes in the first graph to the nodes in the second graph, we'll find that the edges are the same as well. Let's define a graph, in this case k4, that's a click of size 4, as a graph g on vertices v and edges e. V is a set containing A, B, C, and D, and E is a set of the edges between them. I've labeled them for convenience, but they can be labeled however you want. In fact, since we're talking about computers, we should really talk about how this might be stored. So we'll talk about the adjacency list. In the adjacency list, we represent the edges as a set containing a mapping of a node to some other set of nodes. We can see here that A has an edge to B, C, and D, B has an edge to A, C, and D, and so forth. This is better than the previous slide, because instead of having to search through every edge to see if our node is in it, we have a convenient list stored already for every node. 
This is quite convenient if we're concerned about adjacency of two nodes, which we always are. But this isn't the only way we can represent a graph. We can also use a matrix, an adjacency matrix even. Since this is a graph with four nodes, we will use a 4x4 four four matrix. We can order these nodes A, B, C, D. Thus, the first row and second column represents whether A is connected to B. If there is a 1, then they're connected. If there's a 0, then they are not connected. We can see here that everything is connected except for a node with itself. You might be saying to yourself, well, this seems strange because we're storing twice as many 1s than are is necessary. I'm glad you asked, because these edges are undirected. If we wanted to have directed edges, that is, one way only, we can also do that. You'll notice now, A is no longer connected to B, because B has a directed edge to A, so that is a one-way street. In directed graphs, we could have an edge from A to B, and from B to A. These would not be repeated edges, since they would have a different direction associated with them. Here we've reordered the nodes, B, A, C, D. Notice that the edges are still the same, nothing has changed, however the adjacency matrix appears different. Because of this, if we want to determine whether or not two graphs are actually isomorphic, we have to determine whether we can reorder the nodes, that is create a mapping, that will create the same adjacency matrix. If there is, we can relabel the nodes appropriately, see that the adjacency matrix is the same, and we will know that they are actually isomorphic graphs. Now that we know the basics of graphs, let's go back to bridges. The question of whether we can walk every edge of a graph without repeating an edge is called an Eulerian path, named after Euler. In an Eulerian path, we can start and end at any node, just like in the bridge problem. The degree of a node is the number of edges leaving that node. If an Eulerian path exists, there can be no more than two nodes with an odd degree. The intuition behind this is fairly clear. Let's say you started at a node, and you entered another node along an edge. Unless you end your path on that node, you have to leave that node again. Thus, any node which you didn't start at or end at has to have an even number of edges, half of them coming in and half of them coming out while you're taking the path. Thus, no more than two nodes in such a graph can have an odd degree. Because we can clearly see more than two nodes in this graph had an odd degree, there is no way we could construct an Eulerian path. And while we're on the subject, let's take a moment and just talk about a different variation called the Eulerian circuit. In the circuit, you also have to start and end the path at the same node. In an Eulerian circuit, no nodes may have an odd degree. I'm not going to go into detail to prove it, but you could take my word for it or try it for yourself for a moment. But as we're running out of time, let's go to practice problems. I've provided some pictures of rooms in a house. Can you draw these as graphs and then determine whether or not Eulerian paths exist for each of them? Can you tell whether the top two graphs are isomorphic or whether the bottom three graphs are isomorphic? Try writing out their adjacency matrices and determine if you can make them the same. Finally, is there a pattern to the number of edges that you see in clicks? Obviously there is, but what is it and can you tell how many edges are in K21? No cheating.